Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about one of the important concept in computer organization and architecture is DMA controller. DMA stands for Direct Memory Access. How DMA controller works we have to discuss in this video. Mainly DMA controller consists of four important components. The first one is control logic. Second one is three important DMA registers. Third one is address bus buffer and data bus buffer. And fourth one is address bus and data bus. So these are the four important components in the DMA controller. So by using these four important components, DMA can work. Next one is, first we have to consider the control logic. The control logic can provide the control lines. There are seven control lines. The first one is, DMA select, it can be represented by using DS. Second one is register select, so that can be represented by RS. Third one is read signal, so that is can be represented by RD. And fourth one is write, that can be represented by WR. And fifth and sixth are bus request and bus grant control line and the last one seventh one is interrupt control line so these are the seven control lines that are provided by the control logic first two control lines are dma select and the register select these two control lines are the select input lines for the control logic. By using these two lines, CPU will be able to, CPU will enable the registers of the DMA controller. So in the DMA controller, these are the three important registers, address register, word count register and the control register. CPU will enable these DMA registers by using these two lines. So because of that reason, these two lines are the select input lines to the control logic. Next two lines are read control line and write control line. So these two lines are bidirectional control lines. They can be worked as input and output to the control logic. Next two control lines are bus request line and bus grant line. These two lines are related to the bus. A request to the bus can be made through the bus request line. Suppose we want to access the bus compulsory we have sent a request to the bus can be made through the bus request line. Next one is if the bus request line we are sending to the bus through the bus request line then if bus is granted that can be done through the bus grant line. Here bus grant line consists of two values, either zero value or a one value. Suppose if bus grant control line value is equal to zero, then CPU will be able to read the data from the DMA registers or a write the data into the DMA register by using the data bus. If BG control line value is equal to 1, then CPU will hand over the buses to the DMA controller 
then DMA controller can act as master of the buses. Then DMA controller is able to read the data from the memory or write the data into the memory. Next control line is interrupt control line. So interrupt control line is used to specify the occurrence of an interrupt in the DMA controller. Suppose if any interrupt is occurred in the DMA, so that is specified by the interrupt control line that can be represented by INT. So this is the description about the control logic. So after that, then we can go for three registers. DMA controller can consist of three different registers. First one is address register. Second one is word count register. Third one is control register. Address, address register holds an address that is pointing to a specific location in the memory. Suppose address register can contain the address 2000. Okay. The base of this address is passing through the address bus buffers and reach the address bus. After every word transfer, the address register is incremented by 1. It points to the next location in the memory. Next one, word count register holds the number of words that are to be transferred into the memory. After each and every word transfer, the word count register is decremented by 1. And also we have to check this count value reaches the 0 or a not. Next one, control register. So the control register holds the mode in which the data is to be transferred is stored in the control register. In which mode the data is to be transferred that is holded by the control registers. So these are the three important registers that are used in DMA controller. Next one, third one is address and data bus buffers. The data is placed on the data bus by passing through the data bus buffers. The, ad the address is placed on the address bus by passing through the address bus buffers. Okay, whatever the data that is placed on the data bus that can be passed through the data bus buffers. Whatever the address that are placed on the address bus that can be passed through the address bus buffers. Next one is address and data bus. The data is transferred into the memory or from the memory so by using the data bus the address is transferred from the memory or to the memory by using the address bus so this is this is the description of four important components in the dma controller after discussing each and every component within the DMA controller. Now, how DMA controller works? CPU can send the following information through the data bus to initialize the DMA. First point is memory blocks starting address where the data is to be written into the memory or from where the data is to be read from the memory that is specified in the address register. Suppose this is the memory block. Here the memory block starting address is 2000. 
it is stored in the address register we have to read the data from this address or we have to write the data into the address for that purpose we can require a memory block starting address that is 2000 it is stored in the address register next second point is word count the number of words that are present within the memory block so this is the memory block within the memory block how many number of words are there so each and every box is called as one word first one second one third one fourth one fifth one and sixth one six words are present in the memory block each and every memory word has a particular address 2000 to 2005 okay so word count specifies how many number of words present within the memory block so six words are present within the memory block that is stored in the word count register next third point a control to which we have to specify whether read operation or a write operation have to be performed. So that is stored in the control register. Okay, a control register determines a mode in which we have to perform whether read operation or a write operation that is specified in the control register. Next, fourth one is another control that starts the DMA transfer. So, that is also stored in the control register. Okay. So, this is the information that is sended by the CPU to initialize the DMA. After that, CPA can hand over the buses to the DMA controller so then DMA can DMA can can be act as a master of the buses then peripheral devices or IO devices can send the information to the memory the data transfer can be done between the peripheral device and the memory memory can be done by using the DMA controller once the CPU hand over the buses to the DMA controller this can be done bus grant control line value is equal to 1 ok so this transfer of data between the peripheral device and the memory can be done until the whole block is transferred. Once the whole block of data is transferred, then DMA controller works is completed. Then DMA controller can send, can hand over the buses to the CPU again. So this is the DMA controller works. Okay. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will clarify your doubts. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divvela Srinivasarao. Thank you, thank you one and all for watching this video. Thank you.